Hello, this is an unboxing of the new Raspberry Pi 5, the credit card sized computer. It is quite powerful, even powerful than some mini PCs out there. And you can also use it for things that regular computers can't do. I bought the model with 8GB of RAM. There's also a 4GB model that sells for $20 less. But I will highly recommend that you go for the 8GB. Inside the simple paper box is the Raspberry Pi 5. Unlike mini PCs that come in fancy boxes, this one is just a circuit board. It works just like a normal computer. You connect the display here, power it through USB-C and switch it on. This here is the processor of the Pi 5. It is an ARM Cortex A76 with 4 cores. Compared to the Pi 4 which has a A72, this one is 2 to 3 times quicker and that's what makes it such a fantastic proposition. This single board computer is now in the league of low end mini PCs. This is the 8GB of DDR4 RAM. It is soldered down to the board and is running at 4200 MHz. The logo on it says that it is made by Micron. The connector indicates that it is indeed 8GB. Next to it is the new RP1 chip. Designed in house, this chip handles the IO of the Pi 5. It makes the entire IO much faster than the previous generation of Pi's. This is the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth controller of the Pi 5. The Wi-Fi is AC series and the Bluetooth is still 5.0. There is no need for wires since the antenna is printed on the board. This is the power circuitry of the Pi 5. It is fed through the power from this USB-C port. The official power supply can deliver 5 amps at 5 volts, around 27 watts. If you can't get hands on one, you can use the Pi 4's power supply which does 3 amps at 5 volts, that is 15 watts. You can connect displays using these micro HDMI connectors. The Pi 5 can drive two 4K monitors at 60Hz. We will test later how well it does that. You can connect a battery here to power the real time clock. This is the UART connector which can be used for debugging. These two connectors can be used for display or cameras. They connect using ribbon cables and are twice as fast as Pi 4. Power over Ethernet devices can be connected here. The LAN connector on the Pi 5 is 1 Gbps as usual. There are a couple of USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports each. The big advantage compared to the Pi 4 is that the new USB 3.0 ports can support 5 Gbps each instead of sharing the bandwidth, courtesy the new RP1 chip. Having this bandwidth is very useful. The Raspberry Pi does not have SATA ports, so you will be connecting your SSDs using USB. The pin here supplies the power for the heatsink. The newer A76 chip runs at 2.4 GHz, that's 25% more clock speed than the Pi 4. So it will generate quite a bit of heat, and that makes active cooling essential. We will dig deep into this later. See these pins here? This is what makes the Pi so special. Called GPIO pins, these can be programmed to connect and control various peripherals to the Pi. From simple decorative lights to motors of robots. You name it, you got it. Moving on, this is the all new PCIe connector. You can connect M.2 peripherals and even external graphics cards. But being a single lane, it is limited to 500 Mbps. If you observe closely, it does not look like an M.2 connector. Actually, this will connect to another board via a ribbon cable. The hat will have a generic M.2 connector. This is the power switch of Raspberry Pi that everyone has been asking for generations. Finally, underneath the board, you have the micro SD card slot. If you want to keep it compact, just load the operating system on the card and run your Raspberry Pi. In the coming days, I will test drive this new Pi 5, considering the specifications I am reasonably sure this will be a good ride. If you want to join along, consider subscribing. Thanks for your time. This is Vishnu and I've just made my first unboxing video.